Hi everyone. Due to our meeting cancellation tonight, uh, I was contacted by a number of people saying that they were really looking forward to this candy board session. And we've done them each year and it seems to be really popular with newer beekeepers. Uh, and even the seasoned beekeepers agree, most of them, uh, that this is a good insurance policy for any beehive. Um, the three primary benefits of a candy board are it provides additional stores of food in the event that your beehive runs out of its natural honey stores. So again, a beehive should ideally have about 40 plus pounds of natural honey in their hive above the cluster for them to get into over the winter. And so hives that don't have that, you wanna really think about a candy board because if they deplete whatever honey stores that they have, they can come up and they can hit this board, which is just a, a frame the same size as your box uh, that holds uh, however much sugar you want to put in. This is one that I have made up and you notice I only have, I have 10 pounds of sugar in here and it could easily hold another 10 to 15 more pounds. Um, I know Gary Reeves uh, in our club, he'll go ahead and fill these things all the way up and he'll even get a, a board and kind of go across it and basically it's just one nice smooth block of candy. And so if you uh, have a hive that you feel is really low on honey stores, you might do that. Um, uh, and, and there's also a method called mountain camp where people will just take a piece of newspaper and lay it right on the top frames and pour dry sugar right onto it and then they'll put a hive body over the top of that and uh, they can get up there and, and get at that sugar as well. Uh, the one problem that I feel about, their, about the mountain camp method is it's dry sugar. If the bees were to come up and eat a hole through the newspaper and it's not uh, kind of held together by water, uh, that was uh, added and dried. You know, if it basically, if this is not a brick of sugar, that can start sifting down through that hole through the hive, and, and we don't want that either. So uh, that's the primary benefit, additional food stores. The secondary benefit is uh, extra ventilation. You notice we have this little ventilation hole in the front, and this there's a void in this candy board that uh, I'll even tear. I just made this up, I didn't pour this out yet, but you can tear a piece Tear it out like that to where that warm air that's coming up off the cluster of the bees can come through here and get out that hole. So the idea is we're ventilating this hive so that uh, condensation doesn't build up inside. But the nice thing about a candy board is if it does build up inside, the third benefit of the candy board is this dry sugar can really absorb a lot of that condensation all winter long. So while we use just a little bit amount of water to harden this candy in the board before we put it on, um, once it dries out, it can wick a lot of additional moisture in it all winter long as it comes off the bees. And in fact, when the bees do come up here to consume this sugar, they need to liquefy it. They need to add moisture to it in order to get it into a syrup and take it down and put it in the bottom. So uh, that extra moisture up here would help that process a little bit. So again, candy board, um, this is one I have made up. Let me set this one aside. And here's my additional, uh, my other frame. Again, that ventilation hole in the front, it's made out of simple pieces of three quarter inch wood. If you have a 10 frame colony, it's this wide. If you have eight frame colonies, you'd make one that's the size of an eight frame. And in fact, I do have a couple eight frame colonies. Here's my eight frame candy board, kind of made the same way, ventilation hole. I like this uh, little uh, board here in the middle so that holds the weight of that sugar. You know, through the winter, we might come out on a nice day and we'll lift this candy board up a little bit and kind of look under there to see if the bees are at it. And this uh, center beam keeps this candy from laying down flat on the top bar so that when we put it back down, we're not crushing bees. So again, this candy board uh, has some 3 8 inch hardware cloth on the bottom. And uh, I have, I've had scraps of hardware cloth that you tend to have when you make stuff. Um, so I kind of laid two pieces over here and overlapped them here on this center beam and put some staples down through it. And you notice I went ahead and when I made mine up, I had these, uh, it looks like quarter inch shims to where I laid my uh, hardware cloth down on it. And then I laid these shims over it and pounded some nails in it and basically kept, again, this nice void of space between a quarter inch of space between this hardware cloth and the top frames, the top bars of the 
hive body below it. So again, when we're lifting this up over the winter, we're not crushing bees. So uh, when you fill up a candy board, you can't really tell if the bees are getting at it without lifting it up because they start from the bottom. And if we look at the top, it looks perfect, like untouched. Uh, but after a while, they'll start consuming from the bottom and all of a sudden the top of that just kind of collapses in. And now we have a big void in the center where they've been consuming that sugar. And if you're in January and you notice it's really empty here and there's no sugar in the center above the cluster of bees, you can make up candy bricks, which is the same thing. It's just hardened sugar. You can put them in bread pans or whatever you have to kind of make bricks that you can lift up the top and kind of throw into this void in the center and give them more sugar that's more easily accessible. So when we go to make the sugar candy board, I've used these, this is tissue paper that comes between the frames of foundation. If you buy foundation, I don't buy much more foundation, but I've saved all this from what I did. And this is great. Uh, you can kind of layer it into here. And it's really easy for the bees to uh, chew through. But if you don't have this, you can use just plain newspaper. No problem. They'll chew through the newspaper just as easily. And the idea is this tissue paper or newspaper is simply here to kind of hold this dry sugar from sifting through the hardware cloth until it hardens. So I got my tissue paper in there and uh, the formula for sugar water for the candy board is about 15 to 16 pounds of sugar and I'm using a 10 pound bag for this particular candy board and so I'm going two, pound, two, two cups of water. So again, 10 pounds of sugar, two cups of water. I have Honey Bee Healthy, you don't need it, totally optional, but I'll put a teaspoon of Honey Bee Healthy and I'll put a teaspoon of white vinegar, again, optional. This is a mold inhibitor and um, some would argue you don't wanna use apple cider vinegar, that could uh, uh, be attractive to hive beetles. So we use white vinegar and what I have in here is two cups of water, a teaspoon of honey and healthy if we have it, and a teaspoon of white vinegar if we want to do it. Okay, I use this, uh, let me set this candy board aside for a moment. I use this copper confectioner kettle because I have it, and I mix up all my sugar in it. So I'll go ahead and put in my 10 pound bag of sugar. And I won't add all of the water at a time. I'll go ahead and put some in. And I'll start mixing it around, get it, get it kind of mitigated through. I like this bowl because I take this spoon and I just kind of mash, mash it around. I'm kind of mashing the clumps of water and sugar. And it really kind of dis, uh, distributes it through the sugar very easily. And so in the end, we're not looking for anything close to liquid. We're just looking to get enough in, enough moisture in this sugar so that when it dries, it leaves the sugar as a hardened brick. I mean, you know, if you bought a bag of sugar and you set it out in the garage all season long, what's going to happen? It's going to wick in the ambient moisture around it. It's going to dry out and it's pretty much just going to harden in the bag. So you pick up your bag of sugar and you got a big hard bag of sugar. You got to slap around on the ground a little bit to break it up. That's what we're trying to achieve in a more distributed manner uh, with our candy board. Again, we're just adding enough moisture in. You know, you don't have to use all this water. You just use enough to kind of make it to where it spreads through the sugar. And in the end, we have what still looks like granular sugar. It's just wet and cakey. And uh, like I said, it'll after we get it into the candy board frame, it'll kind of spread through there and it'll harden. And that's what we want. If we put the candy board on the beehive too early, what happens is the bees get up in there on a decent day and they start getting, they chew through that newspaper and they start eating it. So people have asked, when do we put a candy board on? I like to put it on as late as I possibly can. It's not too late right now. 
you should have them kind of ready and sitting there ready to go on your hives. But um, it's, you know, now that we're just into this cold weather, it's probably about getting to be time to put candy boards on. But you might not put it on till the end of December or maybe in January. Again, the idea is they have enough of their own honey stores right now. And ideally, they get up into this candy board. They use what they need, but maybe this candy board isn't, isn't spent by spring. Maybe in the spring, when it warms up and it's time to pull off the candy boards and put liquid feed back on, you might have a lot of sugar left in your candy board. And that's okay. It won't go to waste. What you can do is take that and put it with water. Um, I, eight pounds of sugar to a half gallon of water is considered one-to-one -one sugar water. 16 pounds of sugar to a half gallon of water is considered two to one sugar water. So in the spring, we feed one to one to stimulate brood rearing and comb building. And in the fall, like what we should have been doing up till now, is feeding two to one sugar water, and that stimulates storage. And that's what, if we know that our hives don't have about 40 pounds of honey, that's what we want to be doing is putting feeders on our hives uh, of two to one sugar water, getting them to store that away as um, nectar for over the winter. You know, we don't want to be feeding when we know that we're getting the honey harvest off, but it's okay to put uh, sugar water on when you know that they're storing it and you plan to let them have it as food. So two to one sugar water in the fall to try to build those honey stores up to get 40 pounds of, of honey in your hive by winter. So when we start coming up short with that, that's what we're doing with this candy board. We're gonna supplement that extra feed in the event that they spend all of their natural honey stores before spring, they hit the bottom of this candy board and can start consuming it. So see what we're looking at? It's still, it's kind of like cakey, cakey sugar. And when that hardens, it's just gonna leave like a brick. And the same way, when you make these bricks, I'll talk about them more in a minute, You'll put that in a bread pan or something square, something to where it's still narrow to where when you put it into the candy board, you can get your lid shut and it's not sticking up. But uh, remember, as they add that, as they have that void in the middle and uh, the, the cluster's right under it, you wanna make sugar very accessible to them right above it. So you can throw these extra candy bricks into that void in the top of the, of the candy board uh, to, to kind of refuel the candy board in the vent. You know, if I've, I've actually nursed a hive through the rest of the winter just by throwing candy bricks into the top um, to get them into the spring. So we have this mixed up pretty good. Here's our candy board again. There's the ventilation hole. Uh, I've put a two by four or a little block of wood in front of here to kind of reserve that, make a little void of the sugar in there, but I've gotten so used to just dumping it into the board and kind of coming back and making that void. So I'll just go ahead and dump the sugar in there. Spread it out here, push it down into the corners. And like I said, you can jam as much in here as you want. You can come back and level it off on the top with a board and have just a nice solid pretty brick of sugar if that's what you want to do. Likewise, since you know the cluster is going to be tightened, you don't have to push it out to the side. You can actually let them eat through the tissue paper on the sides and come over the top of it on the nice days or whatever. But uh, I find that the bees, if they need it, they find a way to get to it. And again, up here in the front, here's that void. Okay, and when this dries, I'm gonna tear this tissue paper out of here like I just did at the beginning of this video on the other one and make it to where that warm, uh, moist air can come up through the screen and exit out that front hole out from under the top telescoping cover that'll be over the top of this. You don't have to put inner covers on top and you don't want an inner cover below. So this candy board lays right on top of your top hive body. 
above the top bar so that when they come up, they can start chewing through this paper and get at this candy quickly and easily. Okay, so I think um, I've covered most everything. Again, um, you can put your candy boards on later. If you put them on sooner, you're going to find that they're going to get up there and start eating it sooner. So uh, take your time getting them on there. And um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions about uh, candy boards uh, or anything that I may have skipped over, just let me know. Post in the comments below or send an email to uh, or over the website uh, or get on our Facebook page or on the Morgan Ranch where we discuss a lot about bees. I'll have the link uh, to this video from all those places and um, I'll keep an eye on all those places to respond to any questions that you have. Again, sorry that we couldn't do the meeting tonight. Um, and if you have any questions about the other winter prep things like windbreaks and mouse guards and uh, entrance reducers, etc., uh, post those questions too and we'll kind of get you those answers. Thanks a lot.